Back to that top story. Yes, it is five past eight, our top story now. Chancellor Jeremy Hunt says he's not happy taxes have had to rise, blaming the pandemic and the energy crisis. He claims the latest budget and the autumn statement saw them begin to come down and said the Tories are making progress. Well, Sun columnist Trevor Kavanagh is here. Trevor, the country's overall tax burden is still on course to hit its highest level since 1948. What else could Hunt have done yesterday? Well, he could have used the money differently. He could have also uh, cut welfare spending or other budget uh, cuts that would have given him more money and more room for manoeuvre. I think that's the biggest disappointment of this budget, that he didn't actually tackle the sort of uh, subsidies to unemployment which are causing so many problems to this country. There are uh, estimated several million people out there who are, could work but aren't, and something needs to be done about that and a, and a fairly strong measure, leaving him with them the money to cut income tax or inheritance tax or stamp duty, all of which were on the agenda only a few months ago, all of which have been swept aside. And you've got a budget now which is basically about curbing the scale of the defeat in the next general election. And I think that's the point, Trevor. And we can sit here, and, and I'm not being disrespectful to people out there, I'm not sure, you know, they can listen to all the ramifications and the penny here and the penny there. A Tory leader, a Tory budget, a Tory chancellor... I mean, nothing about defence spending, absolutely nothing about stamp duty. Trying to get the younger generation to understand and help them get on the property ladder. I completely agree with Matt Stadler when he said it's almost like anybody under 35 doesn't matter. I agree with that. Pensioners, these are rock-solid core Tory values. And just from a personal point of view, Trev, love to know what you think about this, just dour, deflated, almost accepting of the inevitable loss. I'm being honest. I would have wanted them to come out of the blocks and given us something to try and believe in. They just sat there and laughed. Like, and I, and I genuinely believe that matters because I think people will just have looked at that and think, this is, this is, this is past a joke. I, I, I genuinely feel that. It was the most uninspiring budget I've ever seen in my life. Well, I think that what you're saying applies right back to the beginning of Rishi Sunak's premiership. I We've agree. been waiting for him to come out of the blocks and actually do something. And so far, we've had a lot of promises on immigration and on tax cuts. <clears throat> and on welfare reform, and indeed on the NHS, and nothing has really seriously happened. There's been nothing you can look back on that you can get your teeth into as a voter and say, that's what the Tories yeah. have done. Yeah. And, in fact, if you look back a bit further, this is 14 years of what have the Tories done. They delivered Brexit, but haven't delivered Brexit, if you see what I mean. They're not de delivering the fruits of Brexit. So, yes, I think that will be the biggest um, handicap for them in the general election, the legacy of 14 years of basically ineptitude, arrogance and failure. And, and, and that is, you know, you, you've written for many, many years The Sun was very supportive of Boris Johnson. Most newspapers, most political commentators, whatever their stance, are, are saying the same thing, which is there's just this feeling, this feeling in the air, this feeling of resignation that it's done. And I said to somebody earlier, Trev, we're going to limp along till November, are we? Yes, we're not going to have an early election. Wow. There's not going to be a May 2 election and never was really after the OBR, the Office of Budget Responsibility. Uh, I think that that put the uh, tin hat on any possible election. And the Treasury too is... The two of them are basically dictating terms to the Chancellor and to the Prime Minister on what is being spent, what is being uh, borrowed uh, and what is being taxed. So I think that uh, we are going to go through to November... The, the Tory party itself is in a state of real panic inside, having seen these polls, the latest ones which show... 20%. 20%. I mean, that, if it was delivered, which I doubt, but nonetheless, many promising young Conservative vote, uh, uh, mem members of Parliament will be wiped away. Many existing Cabinet ministers will go. And the sort of new blood that they need if they are to recover in opposition will be gone. You'll have the old duffers left in safe seats. And they're very worried about this. And the possibility, although it's unlikely, of another challenge to Rishi before the election has not been ruled out, I can tell you. We might not even see the Tory party as the main opposition party if things go as, as polling has suggested recently, which is, yeah, absolutely extraordinary. Jeremy Hunt yesterday, though, in, sorry, this morning, I think, insisted that the government has done an enormous amount for pensioners. He says that he's prioritised pensioners. Um, this is a mid uh, concern over the cut to national insurance rather than income tax. Uh, he told Sky News, we've done an enormous amount for them. Uh, this government introduced the triple lock. We have really prioritised pensioners. Do you buy that? 
I'm afraid I do, simply because this is an enormously expensive commitment running into the distant future. I doubt if Labour will change that policy. It's unaffordable, frankly, that we're going to link the pensions, which are going, went up last year by over 10% mm. and are about to go up by another 8%. Traditional Tory voter, though, isn't it, a pensioner? It is, and they, they need to be looked after. But they've done very well. Whether they're grateful for it is another matter. There's no such thing as gratitude in politics. Emma, Emma Wolfe said something this morning that I thought was quite interesting, Trevor. I'd love your opinion on this. We have to be careful <laughs> when we're doing this sort of show because it's not for us to say what might happen. But all the polls would point to the fact that Labour is going to form the next administration whenever the election is and there's a potential wipeout for the Tory party. You talk about renaissance. Many people in this country, for reasons that a lot of people don't like, be it immigration, be it social situations, lots of things, the war, the, the lack of defence, believe that uh, a party to the right, if you look across Europe, will appear. Do you buy that? Or do you think the Tory party will resurrect itself, some would say, as the Tory party with Tory values, rather than this, 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 this I don't know, this, this attempt at it that we've seen? Well, two things. I think that the actual result of the election will not be quite as the opinion polls are suggesting. <clears throat> there are a lot of people who simply will not vote, uh, switch from the Tories to Labour. A lot of people will sit on their hands. They won't vote at all. Mm. Others will come out in the end and vote reluctantly with their ho holding their noses for the Tories. The second thing is I think that that represents a reluctance to move to the left that you just described. And I think that after this election, and with the threat coming from Eastern Europe and the prob problems in China and versus Taiwan, I think all of these things are going to make the appetite for a right-wing party, whether it's centre-right or actually right-wing, uh, much more likely to happen in Britain. And I, it's, a, it's a little bit worrying, too, because I think that, unlike some countries, we don't have an extreme right party. We don't have anyone in there trying to take over and... Um, wave the uh, sort of uh, big stick. Absolutely. <clears throat> but there is a move, I think, to... Uh, there is a discontent about this government's failure to properly fund defence, especially at this point. And indeed, I think that Jeremy Hunt may have won more voters if he'd used the money that he had available to increase defence spending rather than cut... I think there's a, there are a swathe of people and, and, you know, we live in a democracy... Um, I don't like far-right politics, I don't like far-left politics, but there's a number of people in this country, hundreds of thousands, who are fed up with the immigration issue, they're fed up with the social care issue, they're fed up with the fact that we don't have a defence anymore, the fact that we don't have any police and women on the streets. There's all sorts of things. Social cohesion, all those things. So it'll be very interesting. Trevor, thank you so much indeed. Really, thank really you so appreciate you coming in. Trevor Cavanagh from The Sun, always welcome.